everyone. This lesson is over McCarthyism in the Cold War at home. And you may be asked, what happened to colonialism in the Puritans? Well, Arthur Miller actually wrote The Crucible during the Cold War, or right previously before it. He wrote it in the 1950s. And McCarthyism is the direct link to him writing The Crucible. See, he had to hide his topic because otherwise he'd get in trouble, which he kind of did anyway. So here we go. First, we want the essential question. Why did Arthur Miller write The Crucible? We are going to find out. First, what is the Red Scare? Well, the Red Scare was hysteria caused by fear and anxiety about Soviet threat. Guys, this went well into the 80s, late 80s even. Many Americans believed there were communists working within the society to undermine the U.S. So next we have McCarthyism. Now it's often used as a synonym of the second Red Scare. And what that is, is the first Red Scare began in 1919 to 1920. And this was due to the real or imagined events, fake news, has been around a long time, that there was alleged spread of communism and anarchism in the uh, American labor movement. And this is actually directly after World War I. Now, McCarthyism use of fear, suspicion, and scapegoating through the charges of communism to discredit political ideals, cultural values, and individual reputation, reputations. Kind of like the Salem witchcraft trials, huh? And like the Salem witchcraft trials, McCarthy wanted you to name names. So causes of McCarthyism was post-World War I Red Scare, the Soviet creation of puppet regimes across East Europe post-World War II, Soviets get atomic bomb in 1949, Mao Zedong's Com Communist Party gains control of China in 1949, Ethel and Julius Rosenberg convicted of espionage in 1950. They were thought to be Russian spies. There is some debate whether they were or were not. Korean War stalemate in 1951. Now, first they had the loyalty review program. Truman created this in 1947, and it was background checks on federal workers done by FBI. Okay, no big deal, right? I mean, teachers have background checks done. This is important in some types of jobs. No worries. Well, maybe a little bit. The accused were sent in front of the loyalty review board, and anyone with questionable activities was fired or pressured to resign. Then we have the HUAC. I always like that. HUAC, the House of Un-American Activities Committee, and this was a congressional committee to find communists. It focused on Hollywood. U.S. government encouraged pro-Soviet films during World War II, kind of like that one we just saw. The refusal to answer labeled the Fifth Amendment communist. Guys, we're going to find out something about the Fifth Amendment and uh, Mr. Corey from our The Crucible play. So Joe McCarthy was the senator who charged that there were 205 communist spies in the State Department who were selling out to the United States. When a democ great democracy is destroyed, it will not be because of the enemies from without, but rather because of the enemies from within. Now, I agree with that, except not the way he's saying it. I mean, if we look at the witch trials, we had people accusing people of witchcraft because they were trying to get off of it, of being charged with witchcraft. Do you think that happened the same here with uh, our Red Scare? And definitely, you know what, Mr. Joe McCarthy, he was kind of one of those trying to destroy. He was one of the enemies within. So McCarthy was an anti-communism as a political weapon. And he uses this very well for a time being. Just like the people who allowed the specter um, evidence in the witch trials, people followed him. They were a little afraid of him. Democrats were labeled soft on communism. 
Reds were communists. Pinks would gradually help lead America to communism and even called FDR's New Deal, 20 years of treason, creeping socialism. And guys, if it wasn't for FDR's New Deal, we wouldn't have our high school. It was built because of FDR's New Deal. So we get the end of McCarthy, despite all the hysteria, there's no conspirators that were ever found at all. Those 205 people, poof, not, none of them. McCarthy never proved his conspiracy theory. And his political power began to wane. Supporters started to abandon him and realize he was a little crazy. But finally, he overreached himself when he shouted at a general on TV. You are a disgrace to the uniform. You are shielding communist conspirators. You're not fit to be an officer. You're ignorant. How do you think the American public like that? So there's Senator McCarthy. He's painted himself in the corner. So who is accused? Okay, so if you could prove that someone else was a communist, no one would point accusing a finger at you. Like the Salem witch trials. Are you seeing how they are one in the same? Some of the accused were rock and roll musicians, teachers, university professors, librarians, and can you believe the Girl Scouts? It's just crazy. So there were certainly impacts of anti-communist sentiment. And it really showed up in political discourse. So American politics swung heavily to the right, Republican and conservative. Proposals by Democrats to increase the government role in any program was viewed as leading to red, creeping socialism, when really, ultimately, this cost money and the Republicans didn't want to spend it. But what an excuse, right? In the 1950s, Jonas Salk invented the polio vaccine. It was suggested that all school-age children should be vaccinated for free, since those were the ones dying. However, Eisenhower's Secretary of Health argued against vaccinating, say it would be socialized medicine through the back door. Government funding for the vaccine was cut by 70%, and a lot of children died or were maimed, sort of, uh, left um, handicapped due to not receiving this vaccine. So there were definite impacts of communist sentiment lawmaking in Texas membership in the Communist Party was a felony and punishable by 20 years in prison the governor vetoed the bill calling for death that's a, a bit a bit crazy isn't it New York City fire fishermen had to pledge their loyalty to the US to get their fishing license so if you wanted to be fish you you had to pledge loyalty to the US Indiana, wrestlers took a loyalty oath to get their license to wrestle. In education, teachers and professors were required to take a loyalty oath. Textbooks emphasized patriotic themes, promoted anti-red propaganda. And I think a lot of times if you look at our textbooks, you still, you still kind of see that. Um, more so with like American history, you know, an American lit, but um, you definitely see that with those uh, classes. High school told students to report suspicious behavior. <gasps> I mean, hello? What? I mean, just like the Salem witch trials, you reported. Un American books were banned and removed from libraries. So, guys, that's the end of it. I hope you enjoyed it.